Hey everyone and welcome back to another episode of Tacky Tuesday. If you don't already know what Tacky Tuesday is, it is quick, short EMS cardiology lessons, typically less than four to five minutes. And today we're going to be talking all about sick sinus syndrome. Sick sinus syndrome is a cardiac condition or dysfunction that's characterized by the SA node, also known as the natural pacemaker of the heart, its inability to produce a normal and consistent heart rate and rhythm. Although the condition is uncommon and you don't see it a whole lot in the field, you may see it once or twice in your whole career. It is one of the top causes for artificial pacemaker placements. But I really wanted to go over sick sinus syndrome, and that is mainly because in my first year of being a medic, I ran into it out in the field and I didn't know much about it. And so I definitely feel like even though we don't see it a whole lot, we should know the basics of what it all entails. Going into some of the characteristics of sick sinus syndrome, it can actually manifest in different ways during the course of cardiac monitoring. So whenever you're watching the cardiac monitor in real time, you can expect to see several rhythms. It can present with tachybrady syndrome, which is exactly what it sounds like. You may have several beats that are tachycardic, meaning over 100 beats per minute, followed by a bradycardic rhythm them or even a sinus arrest. And atrial fibrillation and atrial flutter is a possibility and also advanced AV blocks can happen. This can make it really, really hard to figure out what's actually happening when you're out in the EMS field. And although it seems very strange, you can actually see all of those rhythms in the course of four to five minutes. So let's break it down. The rate of sick sinus syndrome, honestly, I can't really tell you a rate because it's really determined by the underlying rhythm. So like I said, there's tachybrady syndrome. So are they tachycardic at the time? Are they bradycardic? Are they in atrial fibrillation or atrial flutter? It honestly just depends on what the underlying rhythm is at the time. Your regularity, it's very irregular. Your P wave is intermittent. Um, your PR interval. If P waves are present, it's typically normal, but P waves aren't always present. And your QRS complexes are typically normal as well. Some of the signs and symptoms or how your patient may present are dizziness, syncope. They may be completely unresponsive. They may be completely completely responsive, just complaining of feeling unwell, palpitations, feeling fatigue, shortness of breath, confusion, chest pain, and diaphoresis. And some of the causes or risk factors. Heart disease, heart failure, um, a previous MI or heart attack, advanced age. Unfortunately, if there was scarring or damage from a cardiac surgery that the patient has undergone, even if they're young, this can lead to sick sinus syndrome. Genetic mutations, certain Alzheimer's medications, can actually send somebody into sick sinus syndrome and inflammatory diseases. Although it can present in many different ways, let's go ahead and take a look at a strip where someone was experiencing sick sinus syndrome. So taking a look right here, you'll see that they are having moments of tachycardia and then they're having moments of sinus arrest or sinus pause and going right back into tachycardia. Um, this is obviously just one way it can present. Like I said, it can present with an AV block or atrial fibrillation or atrial flutter, but this is an example of how it could look on the cardiac monitor. All right, let's talk about possible EMS treatments. We're gonna get that 12 lead and obtain a set of vitals, and that's what's going to show us that this patient is experiencing sick sinus syndrome. Oxygen and an IV or a blood draw. If you guys do blood draws for your hospital, treat your patient's complaint. So are they feeling dizzy? Are they feeling sick? Are they sweating? Things of that nature. Are they nauseous? Make sure that you treat their complaint. But if the patient stays in an AV block or is in a very bradycardic rhythm for an extended period of time, it's really important to get a good patient history on this patient. How long have they had sick sinus syndrome? Do they even know that they have it? Because at that point, if the patient stays in this rhythm consistently, this slow rhythm and isn't going into AFib or a flutter, transcutaneous pacing can be considered, but it should be done with extreme caution, especially if they already know that they have sick sinus syndrome. Atrial fibrillation and atrial flutter causes blood clots to form. Follow your protocol. Use your best judgment and get a great patient history and always search for underlying causes. Are they a patient that has dementia that is on medication that could possibly be causing them to go into this rhythm? All right, guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week. Bye.